Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule. As with other goat-like species, the chamois's instinct is to look downhill for danger. They like to position themselves on lookout points that afford expansive views. When they need to escape from danger, they can run up to 50 kilometers per hour. Please continue watching to find out more. Grüezi, liebe Zuschauer, means hello, dear viewers, in Swiss German. I am Elvin, a vegan chamois from the magnificent Swiss Alps. The animals and people of inspiring Switzerland wish for the light of God to always shine upon you and your beloved ones. Welcome to today's show entitled The Elegant and Athletic Chamois. The mountain range, known as the Alps, took tens of millions of years to develop. Pressure from colliding tectonic plates pushed up the highest and most majestic peaks in Europe. From France to Slovenia, the Alps cover about 200,000 square kilometers. Approximately 30,000 species of wildlife make their homes here, at various elevations. One of those species is my own, the Agile Chamor. Our name comes from the Greek word kemas, a name given long ago to wild goats. We are certainly goat-like, but our straight backs and long, strong legs, combined with a sense of pride, give us an innate elegance, if you don't mind my saying so. We prefer living at moderately high altitudes, up to 3100 meters. But when winter comes, we descend as low as 800 meters to stay in forests. Our distinctive features are a whitish head, black markings below the eyes, and a pair of hooked horns. The thick fur on our bodies is mostly dark brown, changing to grey in winter, with a white rump and a long black stripe along the back. An adult male chamois can reach a height of 75 to 87 centimeters and weigh between 30 and 45 kilograms. Our females are slimmer with a shoulder height of 65 to 75 centimeters and weighing between 25 and 35 kilograms. We both have cute short tails, about 12 centimeters in length. Originally, we chose the rocky and rugged mountains as our habitat to avoid predators. This also explains why Shamar became fast runners and high jumpers. By nature, we have very good eyesight and a keen sense of smell. As with other goat-like species, our instinct is to look downhill for danger. We like to position ourselves on lookout points that afford expansive views. When we need to escape from a threat, we can run up to 50 km per hour. Our powerful legs enable us to jump 2 meters high and at least 6 meters forward. We are sure-footed, even on slippery mountainsides, thanks to our flexible and almost triangular cloven hooves. According to scientists, chamois are divided into two main species with several subspecies. Rupicapra rupicapra or alpine chamois are native to mountain ranges, including the Alps, Caucasus of Turkey, Balkan, Tatra of Slovakia, and Carpathian of Romania. Opicapra purinaica are mostly found in the Pyrenees and the Cantabrian Mountains in Spain and the Apennines in Italy. In 1907, New Zealand received several alpine chamois from the Austrian Emperor at that time, Franz Josef I, in exchange for specimens of ferns. 
rare birds and lizards. The shamar were released in the vicinity of Aoraki Mount Cook and gradually spread across the South Island. Like other ruminants, our preferred diet consists of grasses, herbs, lichens, moss, flowers and leaves from shrubs. But when the temperature drops and snow falls, we can switch to eating conifer needles and bark. I wonder if you know what it means to be a ruminant. Perhaps I should explain. Our stomach comprises four compartments. When we initially eat something, it goes to the first stomach compartment, which is called the rumen. From there, we regurgitate the partially digested food so that we can chew it some more. The food that comes up from the rumen is called curd. Have you ever heard of a cow chewing its curd? Well, all ruminants do the same thing. One of the benefits is that we get a lot more nutrition out of the food the second time we chew it. This is because the stomach adds enzymes and bacteria that help to break down the food. We chamois actually spend a lot of our time foraging. Sometimes we even search for food at night when there's enough moonlight. I've heard that our cousins in New Zealand weigh about 20% less than we do here in Europe. It makes me think that food is harder to find there. Let's pause now for a brief intermission and a constructive message. Please stay with us here on Supreme Master Television. Welcome back to our program, The Elegant and Athletic Shamar, on Supreme Master Television. When Shamar are young, both females and males are gregarious. Later, the females, called does, stay close to where they were born, while the males, called bugs, become wanderers. Wherever they are, Shamar will announce a potential threat to all within earshot by making a whistling sound and stamping their feet. For more personal communication, Shamar sometimes use growls and assume positions of dominance or submission. Bugs can also mark their territory by rubbing their glands, located immediately behind their horns, on branches and leaving their scent. Our does are social animals and family-oriented. They live together with their young, called kids, in herds that are comprised of 15 to 30 individuals. By gathering together, we help to protect each other. If a kid loses his or her mother for some reason, another mom will adopt the orphan. On the other hand, bugs are essentially solitary animals. They are forced out of their mother's herd when they are three or four years old and learn to survive by themselves. The breeding season for Chamois is from the end of October to mid-December in Europe and the month of May in New Zealand. This is the time when wandering bugs move closer to herds of does and compete with each other for the right to perform some very complex courting rituals. The challenges between the males can be very exciting and often give rise to high-speed chases up and down steep slopes. This is possible because our species evolved to have unusually large hearts that can sustain long and fast uphill sprints. Try to imagine this. In proportion to body weight, our heart is twice as big as a human heart. A pregnant chamar 
will carry her fetus for almost six months before giving birth, usually to a single kid. Newborns drink their mother's milk until they start eating grass, but they are precocial and able to follow their mother almost immediately after they are born. They rapidly improve their leaping ability within the first few days of life. While living in mountains help us to evade many predators, we are still at risk from eagles and humans. In the wild, we normally have a life expectancy of 15 to 17 years. With the invention of the rifle, our species almost disappeared from the Alps between 1700 and 1850. Fortunately, with the establishment of new hunting regulations and protected areas, Shamar populations were able to rebound. Nowadays, we are threatened by other kinds of human activity as well as the climate crisis. In some areas, we have abandoned our chosen pastures due to an influx of tourists. In other places, we have retreated to higher elevations because domestic sheep were introduced. Also, there have been incidents where Shamar contracted deadly diseases from livestock. From 2005 to 2007, 3,000 Pyrenean Shamar in northeastern Spain lost their lives after being infected with the border disease virus that is found in sheep and goats. And as Europe gets warmer, we need to rest more, which leaves less time for foraging. Young alpine chamois today are actually smaller than previous generations. In just 30 years, our average weight has been reduced by 25%. Please allow me to point out that the underlying problem we face is human greed I apologize if anyone is offended, but some people really need a wake-up call. For example, even though certain Shamar subspecies are protected under the European Habitats Directive, that doesn't stop some individuals from hunting illegally. And even though the United Nations has called for an urgent reduction in meat consumption to address both the climate crisis and human health problems, some people still deny the facts and continue to eat animals. As glaciers shrink and the permafrost melts, the landscape of our mountains is becoming more fragile. There are increased rockfalls and avalanches that destroy our habitat and feeding grounds. I implore you to be more mindful of the consequences when you plan your meals. Also I pray that as you awaken your compassion and embrace a vegan diet, others will inspire to follow suit. If you all make small changes to your lifestyles, a big difference in the quality of life here on Earth can be achieved. Pioneering viewers, thank you for joining us today. May all Earthlings thrive in the peace and joy of God's love. Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule and suprememastertv.com forward slash aw. Nos programs offer plusieurs langues. Veuillez visiter suprememastertv.com bar oblique schedule et suprememastertv.com bar oblique aw. Nuestros programas ofrecen varios idiomas. Visiten suprememastertv.com barra inclinada schedule y suprememastertv.com barra inclinada aw. Acara kami menyediakan banyak bahasa. Silakan lihat suprememastertv.com garis miring schedule dan suprememastertv.com garis miring. Awee.